Alright, so I got my Ford CVH <laughs> 1.6 cylinder head here. Um, you know it's 1.6 because uh, the second digit here um, within this oval RF doesn't mean much. Um, I can't remember what it means, but it's not too important to the casting information um, because this here is the year of the head. Uh, one makes it a 1981 casting, um, so that would be 1.6. Um, the other casting number is 5, 7, and maybe one other. Um, uh, but this one's a 1, so it went from 1981 through 1982 or 83. And then this is the casting number. So uh, the, this what dictates whether this looks like all the other 1, 6 heads or... This one looks different in some sort of way. I'm not exactly sure what those three digits mean entirely for it. But anyhow. Um, so this is where I'm at with it right now. I do have the cam for it. Um, the cam pulley. All the rockers, all the valves, and then all the lifters for it. Um, this was a stock head. <laughs> I was told that someone had it refurbished, but never put in a car, but um, either someone didn't do a good job with it, or they never refurbished it at all, because um, one of the cam, one of the cams on the camshaft was worn down, it was the one in this, in this lifter bore or down one of the cams in the camshaft right in there. Um, so, I need a new cam. All the other ones were fine, surprisingly, but this one, for whatever reason, was just worn down um, a lot more than it should have been. So I'm guessing someone uh, either set the, uh, the rocker tension too high or they used a faulty lifter for who knows how long. Um, these had, or this one had um, flat hydraulic lifters in it. I've never seen other ones, but yeah, this one had flat hydraulics in it. Um, here in America, you can't get rollers for these things. Um, you can get rollers for the 1.9s all day long because at some point Ford had switched the 1.9s to rollers only. So that is an option for you. For the 1.6, there's not much you can do here in America. You can get um, solid lifters, but those are pretty rare. Um, and those still do a number on your cam. Um, and I don't know not enough about the 1.9 head swap onto a 1.6 EVH to uh, share any info on that. Um, but anyway, I had to do a lot of work on this one because I got it from someone and it sat outside in their shed or whatever for 20-ish years um, dry. You can see there's a ton of oxidation on the top side. There's rust stains everywhere in here. Um, and every single lifter was frozen, stuck inside each one of their bores. You can see in each of them, they all got some little bit of rust on them. And because they were all stuck, I couldn't turn the camshaft. And with them all being stuck, there was no way I could get the camshaft out without getting the lifters out. I'll have a different video on how I did that later, because I want to have my lifters and my cam around to show you how I did that. Um, removing the valves and the valve springs and valve spring retainers were all very hard too, um, because my I only I, I don't have the the special Ford tool. 
that screws into the place of these rocker studs, you're replacing the rocker, that pretty much is, uh, just compresses the spring simply by tightening this nut. I didn't have that special tool, so I had to use a normal uh, valve spring compressor for automobiles. And, yeah, um, it, it didn't really like fitting around in this head, but um, I did find a trick with it to make it work on every single one. Um, but again, I'll have another video on that. I want to have the tool with me and my valves in to uh, explain the process. So look forward to those. Um, so what else did I do? Okay, well, I lamped my valves. So my valves are lapped and ready to go. I cleaned off the combustion chambers pretty good. It's still, you can see there's still some black on here. Um, I still got to go in there with a lacquer thinner and carb clean something, wipe them down. That's how I got them as clean as they are. So far it was just a bit of a lacquer thinner. Um, all my valves are in good shape. All my seats are in great shape. Um, my, my lifters all need to be replaced because the only way to pull them out was to disassemble the insides of them while um, their casting were inside the bore of the head. So I could put a puller in there and yank them out one at a time. Um, but anyhow, um, I also uh, ported all the intake ports. Um, I was going to do the exhaust side, but I don't have any 1.6 exhaust manifolds laying around. Cause I, I got a 1.9 header um, that I could put up to put up to this, which is like really big. It's it's really big. The the, the outlet holes for it are um, about two inches round. Uh, perfectly. Um, maybe it's maybe it's an inch and three quarter, but they're, they're really big compared to what these come with on the exhaust side. Um, but they're round, uh, whereas the factory exhaust manifolds for this are these weird kind of rounded square shapes. Um, and I don't want to bore these out until I know exactly how big ports all are on my smallest exhaust because this might go on to a, U, a car with a factory uh, manifold on it. It might go on to something with a, a header I, I make in the future. I don't know. When I make a header for it, we'll go as far as we can. Uh, but until then, I'm not going to mess around with it. Um, but yeah, you can see here I forgot to I forgot to take this video while I was actually uh, halfway through the process. I stopped right here after I finished these two. I left the other two be, um, so maybe I'll clean the include that in the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, this, this is how the gasket lined up. So you can see that um, it got the ports pretty tight to the gasket. I guess with this one I, I went a tad bit over. This one I went a tad under. That one looks near perfect. That one's a tad under, so yeah, maybe I'll go through them again and uh, clean them up a little. Even, even better, but... That's a lot bigger than what they were. Um, I'll have a video on the intake manifold for this because I'll be porting that as well. Um, and after I ported it, I took my grat die grinder to it uh, with those kind of like um, scotch bright uh, discs on them. Grind, grind, small, you know, grinder wheels. I just went over to all of this evenly, you know, just one pass at a time around each thing. You don't want to sit too long or you'll start burning through it and grinding too hard. 
Um, so I went around all the gasket mating surfaces, make it nice and sh smooth and shiny like that. Um, this I'm going to block off. I switch all my EXPs to um, electric pump. Um, so because all this does is just wear down the, the pump lobe on your camshaft and then you stop pumping fuel, um, then you have who knows what kind of issues. Uh, cleaned out the mating surface there using my die grinder too. I did the head gasket mating surface. I also did the exhaust manifold mating surfaces. Um, I, forgot, I forgot to do the mating surface along the, the top side of my uh, head, you know, where the valve cover meets. So I have to go through and do that. It won't take me any more than 10 minutes, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, <sighs> taking the camshaft out, I'll have a video on that. Um, they all go out the back, and when I put it back in, I'll know if that seal, my camshaft seal, is reusable or not. This is where your camshaft pulley goes. So your camshaft comes up in through the back side where the distributor mounts to, in that big hole on the top. Um, and then all that goes here is the, the cam pulley, two screws for your cam retainer. So there's a little bracket that goes in here, holds your cam in, keeps it from coming out. And then these two holes are um, some studs for your timing cover. Aside from that, that's all there is to it. Um, I'm not sure what else I can do to blueprint this. Um, I think these guys are essential oil passageway uh, inserts or directors, whatever you'd like to call them. Um, I'm told that European models have bronze inserts in the, all these little oil holes that people like to drill out. I don't know why they have them over there, but they don't over here. That's uh, bewildering. Um, and I've been told that if you can remove these extra castings in here, like that sharp casting flange, it will improve uh, oil cooling and oil flow within the head. So I'll try that. Um, yeah, I'll just look into it first, and then I'll try it. Because if it's not worth my time, it's not worth my time, you know? Um, yeah, I gotta go through, clean up all of the, the lifter bores. All my valve guides are just fine. Um, I just need to... I just want to soak them with oil and run a... Um, pipe cleaner brush up and down them. Um, to get what little rust residue there is in there out of there. And uh, you can see I got all these metal shards from my porting and crap. I, I'll probably have more, but uh, before I do too much more to this thing, I need to wash it out, blow it out, get everything out of there. Because all it takes is one shard to ruin a camshaft. All it takes is one shard to ruin a valve, um, not seal, uh, valve guide. Um, if you got enough of those going down your cylinder, you will ruin the uh, piston and or rings and or bore. So, that's about all we're doing now. Um, I'm also currently working on a 1.9 head, but, uh, another American head, but uh, a 1.9 head, real similar to this, but it's a uh, C CFI, I think is what they call it. CF CFI head. So it's not EFI and it's not carbureted. I think it's just mechanical fuel injection uh, that I'm currently working on it. We'll go over that. We'll also go over some different intake manifold differences, some different exhaust manifold differences. 
headers, all that fun stuff, and then can differences, lifter differences. Every little thing we can, because um, anything I know, I'm willing to share. So, leave that there for now, and catch back with you all later.